I know he's got something really special lined up for you now, uh, so I'll hand you back to, to Ada, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. Everybody has a Vin Garbutt story, don't they? And I know the tributes have been taking place all over the country. And a great sort of, uh, that, that in itself is a great legacy. In fact, I've bumped into so many people who've said, just in the last, in the last sort of few weeks, oh, I was at the a tribute to Vin at such and such a place. And everybody has a, a Vin story. And I collected some, and I'm not really gonna mention them because you probably know them or you'll have your own. But uh, Simon Nicol, of all people from the Fairports, he said, I've heard you were gathering Vin stories. He said, I've got one. He said, I think it's brilliant. And I said, okay, Simon. He said, we were out for dinner with Vin, and I think it was a Peggy's uh, father-in-law, it was called Perth. They were all out having dinner, and Simon introduced Perth to, to Vin. And uh, he said, Perth's a very important person. He said, he actually has a, a wine named after him. He says, oh, what's it called? He says, it's called Perth. And Vin said, I have one named after me too, Van Garbu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But, but what was always a mystery for me was, did he just come up with that? Or had he had written that and used that loads and loads of times before? And when he used to, he always, he said to me, he said, I never sing funny songs. And he does, because he did that off the back of the boat and there are funny songs. He said, but he didn't want to be known for that. He said, he liked to tell entertaining stories and then he could hit you with something that would just break your heart. And we picked a couple just to, to say good night to you and also good night to Ben as well because we thought it was very, very appropriate. When Derek um, uh, phoned me up for me to do this, please, uh, please believe me when I say that was just slightly uneasy about coming and doing this slot which Ben had originally been booked to do. You know, so I say thank you and thank you for your understanding about the afternoon. And this is my friend John Horvitz, and again, another Vin fan. How appropriate. Because somebody said to me the other night, Vin, he welcomed the world with open arms. And I never, ever had a conversation with him, but he wasn't happy or he wasn't smiling about something. I was playing at Solo Festival with a guitar player who'd never played on stage at a festival before. And he was shaking with nerves, shaking with nerves. And I can't do Vin's accent at all, so forgive me for that as well. And I met Vin, he came over, gave each other a hug. And I said, lovely to meet you. And I said, Ray, this is, this is Vin Garber. And uh, I said, this is Ray. He's playing guitar with me. He's a smashing guitar player. And Ray was shaking, absolutely visibly shaking. He was just nervous, which is okay. John isn't. He's on, on all the right medication. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just turned, he just turned to Ray and he said, he said, when I heard Anthony John had a new guitar player, I thought, well, if he's playing with Anthony, he must be a brilliant guitar player. And that guy went on that stage and he played better than I'd ever, ever heard him play. And he never played as well after that, so I said, <laughs> So we chose this one because it's a, it's a chorus song. When I do other people's material, I'm always worried about maybe not remembering the words, but I'm going to remember these. Take a story. Take a story about a man who's made. This is a story about a man who joined Pink Floyd, but it's not. The man who's made redundant from the colliery and searches for a new way to find, to find his way in the last sort of two decades of his life. And from a friend at the back, this gentleman's name is John Gates. I said I would mention Gates in the show uh, this afternoon, John, and I've done it. And when I heard Ben Garbett sing this song, which was written by Brent Phillips from Bromsgrove, Bromsgrove Folk Club, I had never ever heard a song like this before. Because instead of just going home or going to work at a call centre or whatever it is, or moaning, the guy went on a dressmaking class. And I'm sure you know the song, but he actually made his daughter's wedding dress. And this is a chorus, which if everybody in a room this size sings it, I reckon they will hear it. Give me the silver and gold. Give me the silver and gold. My hands must be clean when I'm picking the seam, not black with the dust from the cold. Give me the silver and gold. 
Got that? My name is John Gates, and I work down the pit till they closed it a few years ago. It was all that I knew, it was all I could do. I was broken apart by the blow, and most of my pals, they were in the same boat. When they closed that colliery down, at 50 years old, I knew I was through. There was no work for me in this town. Oh, give me the silver and gold. Oh, give me the silver and gold. My hands must be clean as I'm picking the sea. Not black with the dust from the coal. Oh, give me the silver and gold. We still met at the club, but it wasn't the same. The comradeship somehow had gone. I remember the time on that co-picket line when our union bond made us strong. Oh, I They were hard men, proud and true. They sipped at their beers, and I watched them cry their tears, and I shared their despair in two. Oh, give me the silver and gold. Oh, give me the silver and must be clean as I'm picking the sea, not black with the dust from the coal. Oh, give me the silver and gold. All I had left were the thoughts of the thread, the thread of the silver and gold. An interest for years, it now held back the tears, and I gave it my whole heart and soul. Then an advert for a dressmaking class caught my eye. I enrolled as the only man there, and as my skills grew, well, I finally knew. I had something so precious to share. I labored for months on my girl's wedding dress, stitching dreams in the silk with the thread. Intricate patterns of silver and gold, all thoughts of that old colliery lay dead. I smiled as she caught my eye And in that moment of bliss I finally knew And I started to cry Give me, give me the silver and gold Oh, give me the silver must be clean as I'm picking the sea, not black with the dust from the coal. Oh, give me the silver and gold. You've all seen Ben show. I used to love it when the audience just sang. There was no guitars or anything. He did. Oh, give me the silver and
time became the sea, not black with the dust from the He said, you have to remember something, Anthony, that I could still walk down the streets of Middlesbrough, of Sunderland, and Newcastle. He said, and not everybody would know who I was. It's just everybody on the folk scene knew who they was. I said, well, what are the other gigs going like? He said, well, there was three people came to the second one. And I said, what about the third one? He said, well, there would have been one person at it. He said, but I got to the door, looked in, and when I saw that the room was empty, that didn't go with me. <laughs> If you're looking for the mark of a writer, I want to say thanks to John Hoare as well. It gets short notice for me. When I was in Belfast growing up as a kid, I would have thought that the only person who would be capable of doing what we'll demonstrate now would be an alien who had landed from another planet because I never thought that somebody could write a song which would not offend the Republican movement, the Loyalist movement, or anybody connected with the British Army. But Vin managed to do it. He did it with a masterpiece, which we're gonna try and perform as best we can for you now. To, to create a song that would be acceptable to all communities and the British forces would be nothing short of a miracle. And Vin, I like to imagine that he just sat down one afternoon when he'd heard about M. Skillen, and he'd heard about Points Pants, and he'd heard about Bloody Sunday, and he just created something which was really, really special. And I think in hundreds of years' time, people will still be singing this song. Thanks again for listening to me. Thanks to John again. Julie, thanks for driving me down here, and thanks to everybody who's taken the time to stay and listen. I remember those civil rights marchers They were battered with clubs to the ground And the very first squaddy to lay down his body And part with his soul for the crown May the troubles of Aaron be over May the bubble of peace be preserved May the white dove inspire the children of Ireland Peace is the least they deserve There are people in the audience who know this chorus Let's just do one more and get in this way May the troubles of Aaron be over May the bubble May the bubble of peace be May the white dove inspire the children of Ireland. Peace is the least they deserve. I remember that cold, bloody Sunday when the troops opened fire on the crowd. Bubble of peace be preserved. 
May the white dove inspire the children of Ireland. Peace is the least they deserve. I remember the tragedy in Enniskillen when that bomb ripped the heart from the town. And an elderly man, he held out one hand to the killer who'd cut his girl down. May the troubles swell and be over. May the bubble of peace be preserved. May the white dove inspire the children of is the least they deserve. And the boys in the bar room at points pass, whose friendship it would know no divide. Then that hideous crime cut them down in their prime, but their blood flowed as one when they died. May the troubles of heaven be over. May the bubble of peace be preserved. May the white dove inspire the children of Ireland. Peace is the least they deserve. The prisons now full of their number. The angry, the anguished, the shamed. But the wire must come down on each county and town for the ghosts of the past to be laid. So let's pray for the day of forgiveness when all the weeping and wailing will cease. May love reconcile all the veterans' green eye and the living and the dead live in peace. May the troubles of heaven be over. May the bubble of peace be preserved. May the white dove inspire the children of our is the least they deserve. Peace is the least they deserve.